Well, howdy diddly dandy there, chums, tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I'm going to be doing a review of Expedition 16, The Cast for No Man's Sky. So let's, let's bring up the trailer in the background, shall we? Let's just hit play on there, so we've got something going on behind me. So, Expedition The Cast, it's, it's brought in some new mechanics into the actual verse in a roundabout way. Now, we've also seen this happen with the Emergence, with the worm tendril babies and all that sort of stuff, the worm babies. Taking those out, uh, destroying them. Now we've got these jellyfish critters inside the space. Now, I'm thinking that these are probably going to come into game at some point. They're too nice a model with too nice an animations to just be thrown away against an expedition. So I do think a lot of what we've seen inside of this expedition is going to be lifted and shifted into actuality and into game, perhaps when they add in the purple systems that we know have been data mined. But what did I think of the actual expedition and the rewards? The new spaceship that we've been given inside of this expedition, this one that's coming down right now, is pretty darn nice. It's called the Boundary Herald. What I would say with it, though, is as you're coming down to a planet and you're trying to land, it keeps saying landing isn't clear, and it's a little bit difficult to land. It's a little bit finicky. These new creatures, freaking love them. The actual end boss fight with a bigger one of those is great fun. I like the whole um, mechanic of them coming in and breaking through time and space using the sort of like hazard protection sort of bar that you had to manage during the actual expedition itself it added a whole new dimension of play which was lovely we got given a few other decent rewards for this we got like a new sort of face or visage with tentacles coming off which was quite nice quite like that that was pretty darn sweet we also got given some more sort of barriers and uh, banners and decals there's the head right there that i was on about people pretty darn freaking groovy so the rewards were quite good the expedition was quite good i would say that this is placed maybe in the top five expeditions considering that we've had 16 so far that puts it kind of in like the the 15 percent of the highest that i would like there were a few bugs with this though it's like the actual pet reward that you get given when you hatch a lot of the time it just disappears into the ether and you don't get your pet so that was a little bit shite for some players also the actual head with the tentacles you couldn't change the color of it inside of pc experimental branch they have fixed both of those things but it still hasn't rolled out to all platforms considering this expedition is only running for about two weeks those bugs i would have liked to have hoped would have got squashed maybe in reap one that's the boss that you have to fight towards the end and that was great fun i had a lot of fun fun is what this expedition brought into the game and it added in a whole new dimension of play like i said so i kind of feel that the cursed is worth because of the bugs if it didn't have the bugs i would have scored it about a 9.2 but because it's got the bugs i'm going to be scoring it a bit lower than that i'm going to give it an 8.6 out of 10 which is still relatively high considering i mean there's some players on xbox that completely had their save scuffed like completely broken and there's no mention about those being fixed as yet there's been some coming over to the ex the experimental branch that might fix some saves but not all saves have been fixed and you see the light trails on the back of the ship some of the fixes that they don't quite touch the back of the ship there's a bit of a gap that's also been fixed inside of the um, patch patch fixes but what i would say is because a lot of this stuff that's come into this expedition you would have liked to have thought that they would have tested all these things and it's even like the milestones inside of vr there's one where you've got to float in the ocean and that one you can't really do in vr it's very broken and there's another one that you've got to look up the, the night sky but doing that you can't actually see the milestone objective so you can't see how far you've got into it and if you do look back down again it resets the milestone it, that one was really tedious to do inside of VR. So there's a lot that has to be desired with this. There's a lot of polish that just wasn't put onto it. And if that polish was added, like I say, I would have scored this a 9.2. But because that polish wasn't there, the bugs remain and they still remain now. And sadly, I'm scoring it a lot lower. So an 8.6 out of 10, which still isn't bad. And this still is within the, my top five expeditions that I've enjoyed the most. So yeah, Endurance, I think, still holds my top spot. I really like that one with the starting on the freighter. That was my favourite one. The whole not having to find your ship just sort of, you know, <laughs> was nice. But anyway, people, 
that's my thoughts and feelings on this. How would you have rated it? You know what? I know how you would have rated it because I put up some polls. So here we go. Let's jump on over to the tint web. Let's just stop that. Jump on over to the polls. And here we go. I'll just make myself a little bit larger on screen. OK, so this is one of the first polls. Have any of the bugs affected the way that you would score the cursed expedition in No Man's Sky? 62% of people have gone and said, no, it's all fine for me. My PC run was fine. I would sit in that camp for PC. I played it first on PC and I was like, wow, they've actually hit this one out the park. No bugs at all. It's seamless. It's lovely. It's great. But then I ran it on my PlayStation 5. And on my PlayStation 5, I had so many bugs. I had so many issues with the PlayStation 5. I've had, I went into a station jumped out of my ship my player model vanished it would only appear every time i used my jetpack and then i went into the appearance modifier to put on well to take off the tentacle mask and put back on my old helmet when i came out of the appearance modifier the whole station just went white and then black and then white and then black and just kept doing that it was like it wasn't like flickering it was like every five seconds it would go between the two versions uh, had to quit out. I've had some really odd issues like flying down to a planet and I'm heading towards the ocean and then the ocean texture would disappear and it looked like all the ocean sort of flora was just on the planet's surface, lit the same way, everything. It just looked bizarre. So I've had that happen too. I've had relic sites as I'm swimming towards them just vanish right in front of me. Oh, it, it, was, it was a little bit freaking weird. I had a very weird time on PlayStation 5. Also, base rendering on PlayStation 5, completely gone. So none of the actual rendezvous planets on PlayStation had base markers, which I've been saying it'd be nice if you could filter them out. So awesome, quite like that bug. But then when I go to my Halloween planet outside of Expedition and the event that I'm trying to do, no bases show up. Luckily, I can do it on PC, but it's not great for anybody that wants to visit on PlayStation. No mention of that in the patch notes, not that it's related to the expedition, but I'm just putting it out there that at the moment there is extremely buggy experiences across platforms. So although that 62% of the people out there had a great time, I know that the pain points that the 12% and the 6% are feeling right now is relatively bad. If you ran the expedition in Reek 1 or whatever, on a console you've probably not had as joined up process as pc so that's why i've marked it down i didn't go to the full 10 percent or the 25 percent i just knocked off like an extra six points which is neither here nor there really when you think about it considering the lack of polish right anyway let's head on down let's see what people have mentioned inside of the comments i'm just going to sort of like do a little scroll and just stop on a couple Cool. These are always my favourite polls, ones that prove the adage about squeaky wheels. Are the bugs a problem? Not to the huge majority of player. Nope. But from the chorus of complainers, you would assume this was massive and widespread, affecting everyone. Uh, I just chimed in to say, yeah, it, my PC was fine, but my, my PS5, not so much. Okay. Oh, no, I, I went and put it around the wrong way there, but there we go. I don't mean to suggest it's a complete non-issue and feel for those affected, but a bit like Chicken Little claiming the sky is falling without how negative people are feeling about it. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I, I kind of feel that a couple of these bugs, especially those that can't even load their game safe, because that's a massive thing right now on Xbox, those players are pretty upset. You know, and for them, some of their saves are over a thousand hours. So, you know... It, it depends if it affected you. If it affected you, I'm fairly sure you would have been chiming off saying I'm not happy. But here we go. There's quite a few inside of here. People saying, no issues. I completed it on day release on PS4 version. Got my egg at the end and hatched it just fine. I deal for, do feel for those people with the bugs though in the playthrough. Yeah, well, I, I didn't get my egg. My egg didn't hatch, right? So, yeah, and I'll put that inside my video as well anyway on my PlayStation. I'll knock off 10% 10, 10 off. I still enjoyed the expedition. Yeah, I feel that's fair, to be fair. I mean, I knocked off what, was about 6% or something. But there we go. There we are, peeps. Yep. Cool. 
Well, this person's saying, knock 10% off for what? You sound like a crybaby. Well, I've had quite a lot of people standing off in my comments saying this would be one of my favourite expeditions if it wasn't for the bugs. If it wasn't for the fact that I've had to reload my game save quite a few times. Or I, I, I keep getting stuck on X, Y and Z because relics keep disappearing. Stuff like that. So, you know, it, I'm seeing the comments from the community and I'm trying to put out a poll that's fair to the community and I'm trying to rate this based on how people feel. Now, here we go. This is interesting because I've rated it, what, an 8.6 out of 10? Most people, 38% of people, say that they would rate it in between an 8 to a 9 out of 10, with 36% people saying it's worth a 7 to an 8 out of 10. So I still think I've been quite generous with my scoring, despite knocking a few points off. So there we go, people. Some people, though, 6% say 10 out of 10, best expedition ever. I've seen sentiments of that echoed as well on Twitter and inside my comments saying this just is mind-blowing. I hope they bring these creatures into the game. I hope they are here to stay. And I kind of feel that that's going to be on the cards. I don't think they're going to just throw these awesome models and the game mechanics out of the window. So, yeah, there we go. Ah, I did find the final boss kind of underwhelming, though. Well, I've, I've already enjoyed fighting it. The thing is, is it's, it's like the, you know, the, the, the giant bugs they added in, the Vile Brood. After you've got all the masks and the helmets from killing those, I haven't gone up against them just for a bit of fun. But you know what I might do is pop one of those little bug things so you get one of those brood mothers up here and then pop one of the, the vials of water and have the jellyfish there. Imagine doing combat with the two at the same time. That could be quite good fun. And then if you did it at a sentinel pillar, holy fudge, you've got yourself a freaking war. Yeah, that, that could be fun, couldn't it? Or even at an abandoned building with all the green horrors running around or by some worm babbers. Yeah. You could make this game as hard as you like now with all these different bosses and the ability to summon them. That could be a fun video, I guess. Cool, yeah. Fish for 30 minutes using different bait on a spot marked by people. Got nothing. I'm done. <laughs> oh, dear. PR, PR. That, that sucks. Oh, well. I know fishing isn't for everyone, but you only have to catch, what was it? Was it five anomalous fish? Yeah, just keep at it. You can get them. Yeah, frankly, a couple of things about it, like the fishing portion were a pain. Oh, OK. Well, this chap agrees with you. <laughs> so there we go. Cool, yeah, tea bags. I'm not a huge enjoyer of expeditions, but the rewards are always worth it. Well, I would, I would rather Hello Games focus on perhaps putting in content that stays rather than this content that comes and goes. As much as I enjoy expeditions, I've always thought, well, that time that they've spent on the expedition, what if they did focus on actual content content? And maybe if they added in some sort of guild event or something where we can do cyclical missions in a roundabout way. I don't know. I like expeditions, but I kind of feel... I kind of feel that it'd be nice if we could run them any time we want, maybe through some sort of guild mechanic. I don't know. But yeah, my review, oh, this is quite a large one by Russo by there. But yeah, they're saying that they give it about a 7 or 8 out of 10. They're saying that maybe it's a little bit too short. Well, we only had two weeks to run this one. Now, I run it on my PC, day one, and I finished it by about day three, because I only did like hours, an hour or two hours a day. PlayStation, I then ran it, same sort of time span. In fact, I ran that over the weekend on a Saturday and Sunday, and I got it done within like about four hours give or take um but yeah i already knew what i was doing so although that it's quite a long one there are a couple of milestones in this that make it feel a little bit bigger than it needed to be but i thoroughly enjoyed it it kept me occupied entertained and i had fun a lot of these expeditions it's hard to say if i've had fun i've i've enjoyed it and i've enjoyed the process of getting the items but i didn't have fun but this one, I actually had fun. So I liked this expedition. I liked this expedition a lot. There's been a couple of expeditions I've had fun. Others, I've just enjoyed the experience, you know? So yeah, quite a lot of stuff going on in here. This is a nothing burger burned. I don't know where, that's a little bit unfair. It's definitely not a nothing burger. And we've got a ship that looks like a freaking burger. Lovely jubbly, I guess. Right, okay. 
Didn't scan the unique animals in phase two. There's no space station there. I'm screwed. No, no, you're not. There's um, there's actually other systems in uh, system four. There you go. Coolio. Lovely. Ha <laughs> ha. Glad you found it. Cool. I'm stuck trying to get the fourth portal to work. Yeah, um, because you had to drink the vial of blood in previous, people thought you had to drink the vial of blood as you stood in front of the portal and then it wouldn't work. You need to keep the vial of blood, not drink it, and then it works. I hope that's, that solves your issue, but you know, who knows. But there we go, one of the easiest so far. I had problems with the, I'm not going to lie, I had problems with the Sentinel spiders and taking out those uh, spider tanks with a greatly underpowered multi-tool. I found that hard uh, on my first playthrough. Then I knew that what was coming, I built the Exomech quite early on on my PlayStation save and I annihilated them using the Exomech. Just having that extra target for them to focus on helped immensely. So if you are having problems taking out those arachnids, get yourself your Exomech. Right, okay, so there we go, people. I think I've fairly rated this with an 8.6 out of 10, but let me know what was your score on the doors. Yeah, Coolio, I put my score there. Lovely jubbly. Coolio. So there we are, people. I think that's pretty much everything I've got for you when it comes to No Man's Sky. I did a news video the other day. I put a link above my head. Go and hit that. I'll also put it as an end card to this video. Go watch that because it talks about the reduxes, what might be coming over the festive Christmas holidays and period. Yeah, four different missions that we're going to be rerunning if you want. And if you missed out on certain rewards, this is a time to grab them if you're a new player. Also, I list out everything that's coming over Christmas and, and when it comes to Quicksilver. There's some really nice decorative pieces if you want to make your own ornamental pond complete with lily pads and all sorts. Those I'm looking forward to getting. And what else did I cover off? Oh, I covered off just a little bit of speculation around the PlayStation 5 Pro launch and is there going to be a new added feature coming into game? I'm wondering whether all these base rendering issues that I mentioned earlier for PlayStation 4 or 5, whether there might be something going happening with a cloud save transfer. I mean, it might only work for, say, PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5 to PlayStation Pro at first, but I think that's going to roll out on the PlayStation 5 Pro launch is cloud save transfer. And I'm wondering if that's why bases at the moment on PlayStation are a little bit scuppered because they're on a different server instance or being separated out for this cloud save stuff. I'm speculating, of course. I don't know for sure. Until next time, salute to Mondo. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.